Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, with some unfortunately sad news. I have to talk to you about volume 11, Au Goût Parisien, in the Parisian taste, in the, the Antonini ongoing Haydn Symphony cycle on the Alpha label. I am really sick of this series, and we're only up to volume 11. It is getting worse by the minute. This is with the Basel Chamber Orchestra, and it's worse for all the same reasons. I, I think Haydn is cursed. He's absolutely cursed. He is so ill-suited to today's period instrument-inspired performances as they currently exist. I mean, no composer could be hurt more by playing the music as mechanically and unmusically as Antonini and the Basel Kammer Orchestra, pardon me, Kammer Orchestra Basel do here. And it, it, there's no reason for it. It's so disheartening. It's just despicable. You know, Daffy Duck, you are despicable. And these things are despicable. I mean, here we have, let's see what we got here, okay? First Symphony Number no. 82, The Bear. Now, the bear is great. You know, it's called that because it's supposed to be, you know, not like, you know, a grizzly out to eat you for lunch, but more of like a circus bear, that kind of a bear, something that's a little bit clownish, a dancing bear. Does this, does this, does this music ever dance? No. Is it ever bearish? No. I mean, it starts out okay. You, you've got this, you know, da 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 ba da ba da you know, and then it's like trumpets and drums and horns. And it's exciting because he really nails the trumpets and horns and timpani. And so, you know, all of these cycles, you know, when these period instrument people get a hold of them, we think, oh, it's exciting because it's fast and it's kind of crude and it's nice and loud. And that's great. And I really believe that, you know, trumpets and drums should cut through the texture. They should. You should hear them. But you also have to hear the tune. I mean, there's a tune in there. It's but it bum bum da dum, but it bum 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 ba dum, but it bum bum ba dum, but it bum bum ba da. You know, there, there's a tune in the violins, and no matter what size orchestra Antonini uses, he is far too willing to bury the tune in pathetically inadequate string playing. Either the numbers aren't large enough, and the numbers here aren't that small. It's like nine first violins, seven second violins. I mean, you should be able to hear them. So this is just the conductor being crass. He's just allowing the brass and timpani to play the crap out of it and drown out everybody else. And that's wrong. I mean, say what you will about period orthodoxy or the style or whatever. You must hear the tune. And if the violins have the tune, then the rest of the orchestra needs to sit back a little bit and let the violins have the tune. And if you can't hear it when the trumpets and drums and everyone else are playing full out, then you have to stop and get more strings. It's got to balance, and it just doesn't. These are the most ill balanced performances. So it started out with the first movement, very, very exciting. And I thought, okay, fine, it's all right. Then we get to the slow movement. Da 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 bum 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 ba da 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 da. He takes it so fast. You know, it could have charm. It has to have expressivity. Da da bum 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 ba da 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 da. Ya da da bum ba da. You know, you can do things with this melody instead of dum bum 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 ba da 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 bum 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 ba da 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 bum ba. It has no expressive meaning whatsoever. None. Zero. Zippo. And, you know, telling the strings to play the whole thing without vibrato and all that usual crap just makes it worse. It makes them sound thin and even less expressive. It's, it's horrible. It's absolutely the worst slow movements I've ever heard in my life are on this disc. And then you got the minuet, which is just a fast blur. It, 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 you know, no time to hear all the little rhythmic tricks and cute things that Haydn does with the minuet rhythm. He just dashes through it, and you have the finale, which has the dancing bear, and I've already told you. I mean, you've just got loud trumpets and drums and no 
tune. The tune is It's a great tune. And at the end, the timpani have a big role. The brass are holding, you know, a big chord and an open fist. It's a drone bass, like bagpipes. So you just hear crash. And where's the tune? Somewhere in the back, something's going do, 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 do. It's wrong. Just wrong. It's not even a question of interpretation or opinion. It's demonstrably wrong when you cannot hear the tune. And why doesn't he care? Does he honestly think that Haydn or any sensible musician of this period would have played the symphony and said, or at the Loge Olympique in Paris, where you had 40 violins, you know, a huge, huge string section with the winds doubled. Do you actually think that they would have said, nah, forget about the tune, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, this is basic musicality. Basic, very basic. So I just talked about the bear, but you also get, this is an 80 minute CD, it's 80 horrible minutes. You get symphony number 87, which is the least well known of all the Paris symphonies, but it's just marvelous. And it has this fantastic opening. And below that, you've got the you've got this incredible bass line where they're really pumping. The whole thing has to just explode out of the gate. And that's what you hear when like Leonard Bernstein does it. You have equality between the treble and the bass lines. And so you can hear both, and the energy and the tension created by hearing these simultaneously moving lines. Now, Carnan Court gets away with it, too. He does it quite well. Thomas Fye does it quite well. This is just awful. I mean, the strings just sound weak, and, and the bass line might as well not be there. And also, I have to say, um, the, the, the woodwinds in this band... I don't know whether they're playing original things. I mean, this is one of those stupid conceits where they, they tell you what they're playing. You've got the entire lineup of the orchestra. You know, you get the book. It's the Parisian. Get it? So you get the Eiffel Tower. Wait a minute. Where's the part? Oh, yeah. Here's the part where you get, you know, packing crates and, and, and vegetable cartons. I mean, what the hell is this? It's just nonsense. But, you know, it's got pictures of Paris everywhere because it's the Paris symphonies the Eiffel Tower at night. But you get, I mean, I'm, I'm digressing terribly. Now what you get is, you get the list of all of the people performing and the instruments that they're using. You know, a violin after something, 1799. I mean, who cares? What difference does any of that make? It doesn't matter what they are. It matters how, it matters is how well they sound. I mean, there's, there's a slow movement in here. I think it's 524. Um, here, which is like a big flute solo. And my God, that flute player sounds bad. Just bad, hollow and, and, and intonationally challenged. It's miserable. And you also get symphony number two. So you've got symphony 24, symphony 87, and number two. And the bigger ones, that is 87 and, and, and 82, suck beyond belief. The little ones suck just as badly. And they have the same problems. Lack of hearing the tune where you have to hear the tune. Completely indifferent and inexpressive slow movements. Completely uninteresting minuets that are just dashed off. I mean, it's just, this is the most unimaginative, mechanical, monotonous, miserably dispiriting Haydn that I think I've ever heard. It's, it's, it's unaccountable. And it's getting worse. It's just getting worse as he goes on. He, he should not have to do a cycle. and He's going to do them all. I'm sure Alpha's going to do it. Maybe we'll get lucky and they'll run out of funding. But, uh, you know, like most Haydn cycles do before they end. But I don't think so. I think this is all paid for somehow by somebody. And we're going to have to put up with it. And it's so unfortunate. Oh, my goodness. And I know there will be people who love these and think they're wonderful. Trust me, you folks who care about music. No one who thinks this is wonderful knows anything about Haydn, cares about Haydn, or even knows anything about music. Like basic Music, like, you know, what the priority of events and things ought to be in your basic symphonic score, which has a melody and an accompaniment. Forget it. Keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.